We used to have the independent nation. But Burmese like to make us disappear. Korean people are really different from Burma. We have our own culture, we have our own languages, we have our own like belief. The war that happened in Burma is, is the longest war in the world. It is very easy to see. But why the world is so long? You have to know the root cause. To be a soldier is not just only to fight. It is to help as much as we can, right? For me, I think everything has been lost. I don't have parents, I don't have siblings. Sometimes I thought that, what if I die, who's going to bury me? You, you like to revenge the people who take over your things. You have to kill the man who killed your relative. And somehow, it should be stopped. Civil war should be stopped. As a child, growing up in Burma, we used to call our country a golden land, filled with treasures. And we were so proud of that. And not only the treasures, we had many other treasures too. Like uh, I remember playing in the forest with toys made out of bamboos. And after a long day, and remember swimming in the river, a simple life, a good life. And now if you look up the mountains, the forests, the underground, there are no more treasures. It's been stolen. Not only the treasures on the ground, but also the hearts of many people. It's got stolen. At some point, we started fighting amongst ourselves over these so-called treasures. And now the country is filled with trauma, grief, hatred, cries, and lies. Seems like we're looking for the wrong thing. You know, Burma is the country where the refugees are the main export, you know? It was February 16th, 2016. And I will never forget the feeling of the grass brushing past my pants as we walked through the rice paddy. And our van had to drop us off about a mile outside of the village near the refugee camp because the roads were so bad. And so we walked together as the sun set over the mountains. And I had no idea that what we were about to find would change my life. My name is Ansley Sawyer, and I'm a travel filmmaker. My job is to find interesting stories, film them, and share them with the world. And at the time, we were a small group of friends who were interested in telling the story of people from northern Thailand. And while we were researching that story, we connected with John. And I got to know you. Yeah. And we learned your story. And all of us were so inspired by you and the experiences that you've been through. And so we came together as a group with a new purpose to tell the story of John's people, the Kareni people, and to share it with the rest of the world. So what started as a two-week project turned into a two-year production. And in the beginning, we thought we were going to make a five-minute film. But after our first trip to the border, we learned that the real story is so much more complex than what we originally thought. One particular moment really struck us, and we'd like to share it with you now. Um, 
爸早呃，怎么就养了来孙六七？我他妈的吃啊，孙六七，怎么又养嘛？孙六七呃，打不能不能来，是耶？我那那不嘛，过啊，是打啊，比比孙六七，对讲嘛，早多得呀，没来啦。早带铺带，不上来洗碗，没碗那平常也很忙，手上嘛是路，那不那得吃啊是路是，嗯，怎么路就阿的，你不晓得呃，是当年你也离哎啦，所以。That moment took our breath away. And as filmmakers, we found ourselves asking, what else is there? And as we started to learn more and more about the Karini people, we realized that the story was so much deeper. And this is the longest ongoing civil war in the world. And nobody knows about it. But that's the beauty of documentary filmmaking. You just film what you see, and you allow the story to tell itself. And the story brought us deeper and deeper. Over time, we interviewed dozens of people on both sides of the border. Mothers, soldiers, students, workers, people. And as we got to know them better and better, their individual voices combined to reveal a greater picture of the Karenni experience. Now, today, there are more than 800,000 refugees from Burma. That doesn't include the people who are fleeing to the neighboring countries just to work illegally, you know? The violence is happening in every corner of my country. The Burmese army, they occupied our lands, oppressed our people, killing our people, burning our villages. So besides these atrocities, the international supports us leaving too, to other places. So what happens to the fundamental human rights to not only Karini, but other ethnic minorities who help us to make peace within our own country? It is really hard for us. Yeah to be able to say with any authority that we know how to help the Karenni people. But through this two-year process, we learned some of the best practices for responsible advocacy. But more specifically, we became interested in how we can make a film that the Karenni people can use as a tool to make the change that they need for themselves. And as we were preparing for this talk, our associate producer, Jenna, said something really interesting. She said, each of us lives within a bubble, far removed from the individual tragedies and suffering that take place around the world every day. And so the question is, how do we begin to burst from our individual bubbles and start to care for other human beings around the world? And for me, what that made me think of was, this is why the Karenni people are still suffering. It's not that you don't care. It's that it's easy to ignore a problem that you know nothing about. And so now that you know about this, what are you going to do? And every person must start to feel like, well, I'm not an expert. What can I possibly do? It's an intimidating question. But we would like to encourage you to do one of three things, every single one of you is already equipped to do one of three things, to advocate, to invest, or to be present. To advocate, you just need to share this story with your friends and family. If it touches you, make sure that everyone in your network is a part of this conversation moving forward. To invest, it's very easy. You can spend your money in organizations that support refugee youth education. 
Refugee youth education is crucial because it helps to build leaders. And those leaders will help communities like the Kareni to find a better future for themselves. And to be present, that's the most exciting one for me because many of you might not know this, but in San Diego, there are people from this refugee camp who fled to the United States and who now call San Diego home. Mm. And there are organizations in San Diego or wherever you happen to live, such as the IRC, the International Rescue Committee, or even here on campus, No Lost Generation. You know, in the beginning, we were not experts. We didn't know how to advocate, invest, or be present. But over the last two years, we came together and we stuck together. And we learned how to help. So, so we live in, in this global village. We are connected and dependent on each other. We are dependent on our land and our soil and what grows from it. And our food, a car, smartphone doesn't necessarily flow from the sky, you know? So as, of, as, as we live in, in this global village, we all suffer one way or another especially for those who's been persecuted for many long years. So I believe empowering the voice of the Karini, the voice of the minorities, can give the chance to study, to learn, to grow, and more importantly, to move forward. We need help, but first, we need to be heard. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you.